So you'll you'll do that. And there's a uh, a link that you can check to have it remember you. When you are on your computer, you can actually check that remember me. And again, this will help you out when you're in the classroom. When you open up Camtasia, you won't have a little, you know, one more place you have to log in before you do something. Um, and so then you can tell it to log in. And by logging in, that lets it know who you are and which profiles you have. Okay? So uh, up here we see a profile. And again, this profile is telling it two things. It's telling it what format do you want it in and where it's supposed to put it. Okay? So when you click on that, the one that we're going to take is this one called screencast.com. This is, this is the case where if that's the only, this is the one we use for Blackboard. And if you said, you know, I really want to post these on iTunes U, we would give you a, another profile. Okay, so that's a conversation to have after we're done today. If you want to put these files someplace else other than Blackboard, we can configure it in a different way. But that, for the testing of the workshop, this one with screencast.com is the, is the correct choice. And then again, the title here, I mentioned before, you could just put one, two, three if you wanted to. But if, um, uh, if you were, in the ones you're doing today, if you'll put somewhere in the title testing, um, you know, Camtasia, just so that we know this is a file we can eventually delete off the system. But that's where you put the title of, of your, um, the content that you're creating. The description is your choice whether or not you want to put something in the description field. You can. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, it is important down at the bottom where you see it showing you uh, the amount of hard drive space you have. Pay attention to that. Um, some of you may be on machines that are in their third year of use at the university and, and may have less space, but as long as you have green down there, you're, you're good to go. And then you should also note, you should see, be seeing levels on your microphone. Um, if you're not, then we need to configure your microphone. And so um, up at the top, you'll see where it says audio devices, okay? And you'll be able to click on that. So you want to click on audio devices, and you can see on mine it was actually not picking the right one for me. If I would have gone ahead, it was using my built-in microphone, and I'm actually wanting to use this wireless one, okay? And so if I was wanting to use this wireless one, um, I, for these, you'd need to take them off, and on top it's showing you like a red dot initially. And you need to push the button on the front, and it'll change to now showing you a green dot. So you have three, we only have two. Okay. Yeah, it's just on my system. So I'm picking then this Revo Labs X tag is the right one for me to pick. Okay, and for you, you've got a different microphone, but you should be seeing levels on your microphone. The thing you don't want, if I pull mine all the way to the top. See how I'm getting red there? I, and when I talk, I test one, two, three, test one, two, three. If I start talking, I get, get some red there. That's going to that's gonna be too hot on the microphone. It's going to sound fuzzy, staticky for people. So um, these are pretty, the microphones we're using in here are pretty sensitive. But you definitely would want to test this. You, you wouldn't want to go in and record 20 minutes and then find out, that it's either really quiet or it's you know making people's ears bleed um, later on. Okay, but once you've uh, made sure you've got levels, you can click OK, and you're back looking at it. Now, some of you might be on a computer where you have two screens, like I am currently. I have um, uh, two screens on this computer. I have this screen and that screen up there. Right now, they're showing the same thing. But if they weren't, if you had two, you know, if you were in an uh, office where there were two screens on your computer, there would be arrows here where you could tell it which screen it's supposed to be recording, and you could pick that screen, okay, um, and choose that. 
Now you're ready at this point to do a test. So this is going to, in a room full of people all recording, this will not be perfect. But what you'll be wanting to do is click that test button and then just start talking. And as you talk, you should see some levels. And then you can wait till it gets to 10. Um, but if you don't, um, you can stop it and it'll, it'll let you do it. But on mine here, if I click play now, you're probably not hearing that very well, but I'm hearing it on my computer that you want to just go ahead and try a recording, try a test there. And if it is working, then you can just close the window. And then it's a case of, um, you know, toggling windows. And so, um, are you familiar with the Alt tabbing on a PC? If you hold down the Alt key and touch the tab um, button, and on these uh, Macs, it's the Command key and then tab. You can jump back and forth between things that are open. But you should also on a PC be seeing down at the bottom all the open things. But you'd want to have, once you have what you want open, you'd want the um, Camtasia window on top of that. Um, if we go back to the workflow, what I'm recommending is that you open the application that you want to record with. So you open PowerPoint first, you open the website first, and then you open up Camtasia. And if you do it that way, then um, Camtasia will be showing up um, over the top of it. This is what this is you know what you would be looking at when you were ready to begin would be whatever content you want in the background and uh, the window on top, and then it would be clicking record. And so I'll do a test here for you, and then we can we can individually practice. But I'm just going to click the record button. This time I get a countdown. It's counting down three, two, one. And as soon as it gets to one and it goes off the screen, I'm ready to go. And because I know later I can trim it, I can trim the front part off, I don't have to be on immediately. Okay, so there have been professors who walk into the classroom, get everything set up, and they go ahead, you know, not 15 minutes before class, but two minutes before class, they go ahead and start the recording. And then maybe somebody raises their hand before they begin what they want to record and says, you know, uh, what, what are we doing Thursday or whatever? Did you watch the ball game last night? And, and that's not stuff that they actually want to keep, just like what I'm talking about right now isn't what I want to keep. But when I'm ready to start talking, I just, you know, take a pause and then, okay, here's the new SPU website. What do you think? and go into my talk. When I'm finished with that, um, I'll need to get back to um, the recording. And there's several ways you can do that. Um, in this particular, um, on the Mac side of it, um, down at the bottom I can see Camtasia Relay and I can click on it and bring this window back up. Same thing with the PC side. You should see down at the bottom of your screen a window or uh, in, in your uh, status bar you should be able to click on a link and pull that back up to the top. Or it may be the alt tab to, sh to shift to the, to the, you might uh, need to get out of your PowerPoint. If your PowerPoint's full screen, you might have to hit escape to get out of the PowerPoint first. But again, remembering that when you're finished, you can trim things off the back so it doesn't have to end perfectly for you. So if I'm finished with this um, talk that I'm giving, I click stop and it comes to a, a preview mode for me.